Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Good morning, good morning. My name is Andrea Simintov, and you are listening to Pull Up a Chair on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com, the only place where your computer should be. All right, so let me first say good night, good morning to our friends in the United States and Canada listening in. And uh, we have early, early morning in the UK, Italy, France, Switzerland is listening in, Jamaica. And also, it is afternoon in Australia. So happy that you're joining me. And uh, we have a nice show ahead. I hope, I think, I wish. So I'm asking you, what are you going to do today? This morning, the morning after, the morning after the American uh, inauguration, I woke up this morning and I stretched my legs and I saw what I could do. I didn't feel any age. This morning, I woke up as we all woke up today and I felt that um, I felt healthy. I felt grateful. There's so much going on around us, boys and girls. There's so much scary stuff. We are not out of this pandemic. Even we in blessed, holy, and ahead of the, uh, ahead of the grid Israel, we're not close to out of it. But today, I am determined to be healthy, human, and whole. I am today determined not to project, but rather be a receptacle for good, for love, for laughter. And indeed, I in- invite all of you, all of us, everybody listening to this special program and this special opportunity to be the same, to really let's spread the good feelings, spread the love. I know it's corny. I know it's kooky. But really, the days of rancor have to be over for all of us. Anyway, it's going to get very frisky here in Israel in the next couple of weeks, because even though we're getting ready for Pesach, even though we're getting ready for Purim, we're also getting ready for election number 107. So a lot to talk about in the days to come, in the weeks to come. But here, we're going to keep it light. We're going to keep it happy. We're going to keep it laughing. And we're going to keep it spiritual. Andrea Simintov, see you on the other side. Israel is located in one of the most volatile areas in the world. Israel is an island of stability and a sea of war and unrest. In the midst of this turmoil, Israel stands out as a beacon of order and human progress. Each week we update you on what's happening in this, the Jewish state, a true light unto the nations. This is Jay Shapiro. Join me every Thursday on Israel News Talk Radio. We're back. Andrea Simintov, pull up a chair on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. The chat room is open, so let me know that you're listening in. Um, just drop me a note. Hey, Andrea, I'm here. And um, and if you have any questions about the show, you want any links about anything that I refer to, uh, contrary to popular opinion, I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> you don't have to make other stuff these days. And um, you could write to me at Andrea at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. I have a couple of notes that I have to write back to this week. I got a couple of nice notes. Thank you for writing in. I got them, and I will answer you. It was a <laughs> – I was so cold this week. I was busy moving heaters from room to room. How could I even um... – <laughs> I couldn't sit at the computer. I was trying to keep from getting frostbite. Hopefully the sun will be shining today and it will be good. I have to tell you that this morning, 
turn on the light in here. If the show has any kind of technical weirdness or the volume comes in or out, please be very forgiving of our Cracker Jack staff. I am obviously because of the pandemic. As usual, I am speaking with you from my home studio, not so sophisticated with cups of coffee, hair dryers, and lip gloss. Okay, so I, for one, am very hopeful this morning, but not for the same reasons that um, my religiously disconnected American Jewish friends are fawning this morning. And I am not in a funk this morning um, the way that my... uh, that so many, so many heavenly disconnected people who were Donald Trump groupies are beside themselves and sad this morning. Um, you know, I have to ask you, during the last four years, any of us, any of us on either side of the aisle, did we get closer? Did we get kinder? Did we get more united? Did hatred unite? Did fear unite? Or do we really need a Paro? Or do we need an Obama? I'll get in trouble for that one. (laughs) In the wings to remind us of that which unites us and to which God we owe our allegiance. People, stop your fawning. Fawning, who's going to help us? Who's going to save us? No. Joe Biden in the White House and Camila Mamala Harris in the prettier house next door. They don't hold any promise or hidden magic for those of us who live and keep and guard the God-given land of Israel. I have great hope this morning because without the illusion of friends who bear false gifts, we have been given again a glorious opportunity to raise ourselves up from our bootstraps, look deeply within, pray for his guidance with a capital H, pray for his mercy in the upcoming Israeli elections, and pray that we're bestowed a strong leader, a fearless Zionist who will not kowtow to the false gods of the West, a leader who will be far less loved than he or she is respected. And feared. Surprise, surprise, boys and girls, America is not Israel. Their neighbor, Canada, is not chomping at the bit to annihilate the United States. Uh, We don't have those neighbors. And so I say to all of my deeply disappointed Donald Trump supporting friends, perhaps your love fest was a little bit smug and rife with amnesia. The faith you were appointed with as you emerged from your mother's respective wombs was a faith that you and all of us were born in knowing. A faith that society, Wall Street, Hollywood, and the United Nations has worked doggedly toward ensuring that you, we, me, separate from our God in heaven. I urge you today to take back your faith. Take back your autonomy, take back your divine status as both a reflection and an emissary of heaven's labor and God's full faith in your ability to be the change that the world longs for each and every day in which we open our eyes and face and embrace the potential of this partnership. You know, this week's Parsha is all about, all about learning, all about studying. Uh, we're going to talk, the name of the Parsha this week is Bo. Bo, come. I say to my dog, Boeda, come here. Come. Bo, Bo, Bo. Okay. See, I'm playing with my own mic here and it's going up and down. So if I go in and out, just write me a note. Andrew, what brilliance did you just spew with? You just tell me what time. Um, you know, it's all about the prerequisite of parental teaching, not putting our faith in false gods who will take over the labors of what we're supposed to do. It's for this reason that at the end of the statement, urging parents to tell their children about God's miracles in Egypt, the Torah clearly posits, 
so that you parents shall know that quote i am the lord one would think that parents would instruct their children that they the children should know god's greatness the reason for the diatem simply states that parents must learn first before they impart knowledge to their offspring jewish values jewish values do not change with whomever sits in the White House. They do not change with whoever is sitting in a comfy chair on Balfour Street in Jerusalem. They do not change which, with whichever jerk holds the reins of the United Nations this month. All right. Before I get on other tangents, let's get to some fun stuff. Um, we're going to talk about several lessons in this week about education, about chinuch. Chinuch is the Jewish word for education. Okie doke. Um, <laughs> so 12 minutes. Joe Biden is president for 12 minutes. And apparently the Twitter account of the U.S. ambassador to Israel. You want to hear the new title? U.S. ambassador to Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. Five hours into the new administration, this came out. The first item on their agenda, Israel, the size of New Jersey. Israel, don't you know? We are indeed, we are the reason for all the sadness, all the danger, all the horror in the world. Don't look anywhere else. Look at Israel. First, first item on the agenda, recognition of Hamas. Nice work, America. So all of you grinning into your coffee this morning. Oh, we got him out. We got him out. Nice work. Remember what we talk about on this show? We talk about all the time, only 20% of the Jews merited leaving Egypt. Well, as you grin and laugh and celebrate the new gods in Washington, which side of the exit, of the exit line are you going to be on? Are you part of the 20% or are you the 80% who will fall back into the dustbins of history. Okay, talking about that, interesting. Barbara Sofer comes up. Barbara Sofer, she's an author, she's a writer, she's a public speaker, wife of the famed scientist Gerald Schroeder, and Barbara is also the head of public relations of the Hadassah Hospital Network System. She wrote a beautiful article, says that by 2065, Democrats say that Israel will be the most crowded nation on earth. Um, I don't know, you know, what that means. I, I sometimes think, will there be enough water to go around? Jewish ingenuity will make it happen. Will there be enough energy? Will there be enough farmland? Will there be enough peace with our neighbors? Jewish ingenuity will take care of it. Um, Barbara says that she's one of these optimists who see our national birth rate as an expression of positive values, willingness to take on responsibility and confidence. And I might add a an opposition, a repulsion by the idea of constant hand wringing. Apparently Israel's population is growing at two percent a year, four times the national the average of zero point five percent. What is that, a half a percent in other developed countries. That talks about hope. I like that. I have hope. Why is it relevant? Let's go on and on. Oh, in the <laughs> in the bleak department, um, saw an interview. I'm doing this on one foot, so forgive me. I saw an interview with um, candidate Gideon Saar of the new of the Hope Party, Israel's Hope Party, with Christ, uh, Christina Amanpour from CNN. Now, I had always heard, you know, the buzz. Oh, she's an anti-Semite. Uh, she's one. But you know what? I don't like that. I don't like being told who to listen to. I listened to this interview. Christina Amanpour. You're right, guys. She had an agenda. He answered her questions. She said, why is Israel not inoculating the Palestinian Authority? Doesn't mean that Israeli Arabs living here and carrying Israeli identity cards uh, are not eligible and receiving the COVID vaccines. But the Palestinian Authority, under the Abbas administration, they do not participate in anything with Israel. They are our avowed enemies, and they are being drowned in money. And Saar 
answered her question. He said, they have so much abundance and ability to take care of their population. And she kept saying, that's not the point. That's not the point. He kept answering the point. She has an agenda. You know what? She had an agenda. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk more about education, what we can do to ensure that today is indeed the first day of a bright new future, just as yesterday morning was and just as tomorrow morning will be. Andrea Simintov, see you on the other side. The Tamar Yona Show. Tamar, she's sassy. She's smart. She's funny. But she's also a real Jewish mother. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamar Yona. And yes, I can be all of those things. But at Israel News Talk Radio, I'm here to bring you the news stories and guests that you may not hear anywhere else. Join me live on air Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays for the most unique and bold talk radio in Israel. The Tamar Yona Show. Shalom, I'm Leah Aharoni. Join me on my show, News from the Torah. Each Sunday, we'll use the weekly Torah portion as a prism for understanding the news today. Listen to News from the Torah to gain clarity about the times we're living in and to understand your own spiritual path in the process. News from the Torah every Sunday on Israel News Talk Radio. Okay, we're back. Andrea Simintov, pull up a chair on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Very funny. So if things sound a little fragmented, each week I begin with apologies. So the reason the show sounds weird today, but anyway, um, I, 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 I kept dropping the mic and I seem to have ripped the wires. So I'm not so certain that the volume stays and I'm holding the mic halfway and everything's going kooky here. But you know what? We want to keep it real. That's what friends do. All right. I was debating whether or not to share this little story with you. But the producer, not the producer, the engineer and I had a good yuck this morning. And again, a scary world, this world of cyber, you know, cyber intelligence and cyber hacking. And I speak frequently about my mother, who's sharp and wonderful and bleh in a hurry. She should live at Mayeva Estream until 120. So she lives in an adult, a uh, independent living facility uh, in the northeast actually not far from the inauguration site i may add okay i think the motorcade went past her and waved hey irma anyway got scary news so my mother was apparently hacked hacked and it's so cruel it really is very cruel here you have i mean elderly people who she's fantastic i mean she can skype we have her a a thing called grandpad it's like a a, a face time kind of thing like with four icons doesn't comp- confuse her doesn't freak her out you know <laughs> anyway, so she was hacked and so immediately my brother who is very computer savvy works for a government agency he immediately jumped in stopped all the accounts contacted the bank um credit card companies all of her um gosh i'm losing the english her creditors. Anyway, he put a stop to it and we were able to stop. I was really proud of my brother. He was able to stop pretty much everything that was compromising her privacy. But of course, it's very distract, you know, very disconcerting to her. She's frightened. She says, you know, she feels very, very vulnerable. But the one thing she didn't seem to feel vulnerable about was when we discovered that she became a partial investor during the hacking episode with a Russian por- pornographic film company. So apparently my mother is one of the producers of um, Russian pornographic films. And when I said to her, and you know what I found out? She didn't tell me. She was embarrassed. You know, I'm too religious to tell that she found out. She, she told it to one of my kids who called me and told me, said, do you know that our grandma's, you know, uh, apparently investing in Russian pornography. So when I called her and I asked her about it, she started to stammer. Her 
a Brooklyn came out. I don't know. I don't know nothing from this. I don't know what. I don't know people, naked people, naked, naked people from the Soviet Union. I don't. It was pretty funny. Anyway, so if you see Irma's name coming up in the credits next time. Okay, just thought I'd share that with you. Let's keep it real. All right, we'll get to uh, Chinuch in a minute. Chinuch, let's see. Anybody else enjoyed that story as much as I did? Um, oh, here. So the elections are coming up. Nothing, nothing in the world and certainly nothing in Israel stays the same. I mean, things can change in a moment. Um, a year ago now, we were all kind of, there was a buzz about some kind of a virus coming out of China. We didn't know about it. And boy, oh boy, did the world change. So as of this morning, apparently the Likud, Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party, which was sort of uh, written off, written off as irrelevant and a party of yesterday, they have a very wide lead. I think as of this morning, it was 15 or 16 seats over Gideon Sar's New Hope. And... um, Hold the third of his challenges, right wing faction slide six seats to 50. Anyway, so right now, as of this morning, it looks like Benjamin Netanyahu may pull another rabbit out of his political hat. But that's this morning. I don't know what Sunday's going to bring. All right, let's cross this out, cross this out. This is a story I loved. Loved. How many in the States have heard about? Um, I have some listeners from Texas. In Texas, do you know about a guy or a representative called Chip Roy? Is that a great, is that a great name, Chip? You won't find any Jewish boys named Chip, a guy in the yeshiva. Hey, Chip, (laughs) can I borrow you to fill it? I left mine as home. (laughs) Maybe Chaya, (laughs) maybe Zev, Chip. But anyway, so Chip Roy says that he's taking an indefinite leave from social media. A lot of people apparently are leaving social media, leaving Facebook. Uh, My son says to me that I can't reach him on WhatsApp anymore, but it's not really true. He seems to answer all of my uh, texts. But he's taking Chip Roy, i got to say it again, Chip, is taking an indefinite leave from social media in part because he saw how Jews in Israel celebrated their Sabbath. He made this announcement in a Wall Street Journal op-ed on January 11th. I love this story. And that he said, I mean, obviously, we're obviously talking about, you know, a serious Christian here because, you know, the language sort of leads me to believe it. He says, we were inspired by seeing our Jewish brethren in Israel celebrate Shabbat which reminded us of the Sundays we grew up with in the 1970s and 80s, he writes. Ever since, one-seventh of our time has been immeasurably better, and Sunday dinner is the highlight of our week. I'm doing so, he goes on, not to make a political statement, but in the hope that America can return to kitchen tables, churches, taverns, coffee shops, dance halls. It's a Texas thing whatever it takes to look others in the eye and rebuild our communities and humanity. I really liked this story because I like anything that's consistent with Torah. I really do. And I like Chip. Uh, And we're going to talk a little bit more as we get to the Devar Torah section. We're going to talk about parental responsibility, talking about what we can do. You know, the table has traditionally been in, in, there's a reason that in our synagogues, a, a, a Torah observant, an Orthodox synagogue, the bima is not up ahead in front of the ark, like a piece of theater, but rather it's smack dab in the middle of the synagogue, surrounded by pews, surrounded by chairs, to replicate a table and a mizbeach, an altar, And if we look at our tables, our kitchen tables, as altars, well, we certainly can't load them with gossip magazines and computers. They have to be laden with holy foods and love and kosher talk and discussions that portend hope and rootedness. So I really like Chip. Chip, when you come back to Israel when we no longer have to be far apart from socially distant from one another, you are invited to Ronnie and Andrea's house. Okay. Oh yeah. Here Chip closes up and he says, I love saying the name. 
if I had another child, if I were actually physically able, biologically able to have another child, just I think I would name him Chip, even if it were a girl. All right. Of all God's earthly creations, according to Chip Roy, man is the only one with rational speech. But we used to have a better way to communicate with each other. Let us dine together. Let us look each other in the eye. Let us sit down and talk again. I think that Chip wrote, pull up a chair with Andrea Simento. Okay, another piece of fun, interesting, let's talk about it, news. The IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, Sahal, sees a record number of Arab conscripts. More and more Arab boys and girls are joining the Israel Defense Force. Um, I'm trying to think where I actually got this article. Maybe Times of Israel? Okay, let's not say it because I don't know. Uh, With a thousand new soldiers from Israel's largest minority, it's more than double than that of the recent years. Arab troops are serving in, be still my heart, combat roles in prominent brigades. The army says it has also had inquiries from Syria and Lebanon. Does that mean that they want to join the army? More than a thousand Israeli Arabs have volunteered to serve um, as conscripts or to be in the reserve. Mostly, oh, so this happened mostly after the coronavirus began in March. The number of conscripts in the Arab sector is more than twice in previous year and it includes Muslims from areas such as Taibe, Kolansua, and East Jerusalem. I don't think the ones in my neighborhood are joining the army, but I may be wrong. Bedouin, Bedwinim, from the Galil and Christian Arabs in the north. This is very interesting. Um, it's something to be to keep our eyes on. I'm a little bit of a cynic. I worry. But... Um, you know, but as a result, because Israeli army always steps up, steps up. I mean, even Lahavdil, I mean, the separate, not to, soldiers who have certain uh, disabilities, whether they be physical, emotional, mental, there's places for so many different, there's no longer a pasteurized version of the Israeli army. So as a result, the army has opened a recruitment bureau, unbelievable, in the Galil, where volunteers can study and improve their Hebrew. Um, The branch is going to recruit up to 2,500 Arabs a year, and the program is called Ambassadors in Uniform. What do you think about that? I think it's kind of interesting. Hmm. All right. So before we go, let me just cross that out here. The show is called Pull Up a Chair. It's what we do. We pull up a chair. I like this stuff. I told you my mother in pornography. Okay. You had to hear the voice. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know. I mean, who knew? Okay. When we come back, we're going to talk about what we can do. Not what we could at least do, but what we can do to master the world, impose morality, impose happiness, impose joy. And as we emerge from this dark era of COVID, and as we call out the roles we can play, see you on the other side. In a time where feelings have become fat, where rational thought and common sense has disappeared. One man stands above it all. I'm Howie Sobaker, your political hitman. Political Hitman airs every Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. North American time, 7 a.m. Israeli time, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Are you interested in transforming your life, drawing closer to the Creator, and uncovering the deeper meanings and hidden treasures in the Hebrew Bible? Then join me, Rav Yitzhak Michelson, and me, William Hall, on the Science of Kabbalah, where we are seeking to narrow the gap between what we understand of our physical and spiritual worlds. So make sure to tune in every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Israel Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on Israel News Talk Radio. Radio.
Okay, my name is Andrea Simintov. Pull up a chair. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just looking at my Facebook feed and seeing the Jewish fawning. You're so excited. Oh, <laughs> silly. I, I'm just, I'm just embarrassed. Embarrassed. Okay, embarrassed. Putting your faith in men, in any man. Where's your faith in yourself and your inherent holiness? Wringing hands. Okay. Um, before, oh, before we even get into this, I'm scared that I'm not going to get to say this, so I'm going to say it right now. At some point this morning, make yourself a note, make a dot on your hand, a, a piece of nail polish, turn your watch inside out, and remind yourself, it's Thursday morning here in Israel. It's Thursday afternoon in Australia. Um, remind yourself. How will you reach out to another person to spread the joy, to spread the love, to spread the holiness? Who will you invite to your Sabbath table, socially distant? Who will you make a phone call to? To whom will you send some flowers or a note? If all of us, if all of us, I did this actually at the beginning of the, the when I, three years ago when I started the show, I made a joke and I would say to all seven people who are listening in today and somebody was pretty PO'd at me. Anyway, to all of us listening to the show, if every one of us will make one or two efforts at outreach, it will be a different Sabbath the whole world over. Okay. Um, so... This Parsha, let me start backwards here. Let me start backwards. I've got all the pages here. If it's sounding fragmented today, you should just know I am so cold. All right, let's talk a little bit about Jewish education. And the reason I'm so focusing on Jewish education today is because I am seeing so many people putting their faith in false gods, false gods sucking their fingers, sticking it up and saying, which way is the wind blowing? What is correct today? And I have to tell you, there's only one correct. The Torah is a blueprint for the world. Not a blueprint for the Jews, a blueprint, well, it is a blueprint for the Jews, but indeed, it's the blueprint for the world. And if something feels just darn right, you could be pretty sure that it's consistent with Torah. But if you have to sort of do a couple of cartwheels and twists and bend a little way to make something consistent with the Okarant belief system, I promise you, it ain't Torah. So Jewish education occupies a very uh, a very unique position in Jewish life. The study of Torah, this is a cardinal principle. It's not something that we squeeze in when we have time. And for those of us who didn't get to go to, quote, Hebrew school, I'm sorry, I don't know. I didn't get to go to Hebrew school. I didn't get to learn. No excuse. It's available all over. The cardinal principle of Jewish faith is learning. It's underscored in the Mishnah and the Gemara. Knowledge and study, it's not only a means to religious and ethical behavior, but knowledge and study themselves, my friends, are modes of worship. This Parsha says, says the words, at the, and that you may tell. Hashem is saying to the children of Israel, if you will diligently impress the greatness of God upon your children and grandchildren, you yourselves will grow in strength of faith and in knowledge of the Lord, and you will know that I am the Lord. I'm asking all of us, as we're reaching out, to just do one act of kindness, preferably two, um, as we enter this Sabbath, to realize that that act of kindness is indeed an act of worship. The Torah reading this week begins with the Hebrew word bo, bo. I have deal like I say to my dog, bo, <laughs> okay. This word literally means to enter. Normally, if we wanna describe crossing a threshold to appear before a person, the word bo is not usually the verb that's used. To enter in that instance means to delve into the personality and the mind of the person, to enter the conscience of the person sort of, so to speak. So why does the Torah use this word bow in connection with Moshe? 
appearing once again before the Egyptian Paro in order to tell him that he should liberate the Egyptian slaves and allow the Jews to live as free people outside of Egypt. Why is he using that? Doesn't Moshe know Hebrew? So according to Rabbi Wine, Rabbi Wine points out that the insight can be found in the words that Hashem says to Moshe. Hashem says to him that he should be aware that his words will have no effect and that Paro will not allow the Jews to leave, um, to be released from the bondage. It appears that Moshe is actually being sent on a futile mission. The sole purpose is to somehow change the heart and mind of Paro and allow him to free the, Jew the Jews, and uh, they should go forth. But it seems obvious that the entire conversation between Hashem and Moshe leaves us wondering, well, why is that? It's not going to work. What are we supposed to learn? It's further brought down that in the conversation lines, God tells him that heaven has hardened the heart of Paro. Paro is not capable of making the correct choice for his own salvation, the salvation of Egypt. The Talmud teaches us that people who are completely evil, based on previous behavior and their actions, they're incapable of repentance. They can't choose wisely, even when they stand at the at the, at the cusp of hell. A lot of times we're witness to this fact that usually very bad people who previously had the opportunity to repent and do good find themselves, they find themselves trapped by their own narrative, if not their own nature. These are the circumstances they brought upon themselves. And even though they were aware that their policies and the behaviors might be indeed suicidal and harmful, they're unable to prevent themselves from falling into this abyss, this chasm. I love the word. There's a great word in Hebrew, this great pilug that they themselves have created by a stubborn mindset. I have to veer away from my text for a moment and say the famous words of Golda Meir, who again, a flawed individual as all of us, but as she pointed out, and actually I don't even know if it was Golda Meir or the late great Abba Iban, who used to say about our Arab enemies, they never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Okay, back to the text. Um, Hashem tells Moshe that this is the case regarding Paro. He is unable, even if he wants to withdraw from his situation that he himself has entered through his behavior, through his decisions, through his stupidity, through his ordinariness, his greatest advisors have told him that he is destroying Egypt and he's destroying himself. And yet he can't stop. He can't even get his senses together. He can't even uh, regroup the way I say you lay in bed in the morning. You think, what kind of day will today day be? Today is a day when I will stretch, when I will grow, when I will receive holiness. No, he can't do it. He can't even make a wise choice to save the lives of thousands of Egyptians. And so Hashem tells Moshe, Bo, enter his mind. And when you are able to do so, you will appreciate that Paro is not going to be able to save himself. This lesson regarding human stubbornness, human futility, that's the reason that the Torah uses the verb Bo. So, in going on and talking about this exodus, I think it's a very nice insight, personally, about Paro. You know, oh, what can I say? What can I bring him? What can I do? Oh, if only he'll love us, he'll love us, he'll love us. Oh, people, it's not just stories. It's us. Okay. Let's talk more about the word Bo, the nuance, the nuanced understanding to enter, to penetrate into a place or a person. It's also a verb that's used for physical intimacy throughout the Bible and throughout the rabbinic writings. Hashem tells Moshe to appear to him, you know, superficial, not to appear superficial, but attempt to understand why he's so stubborn and what the true issue is in freeing the Jewish people for Paro. In effect, Hashem is telling Moshe that it's not only the stubborn will of Paro that's involved, it's also that Hashem has hardened his heart. There's a lesson here. 
Um, he's hardened his heart. It's given him the courage of his convictions. No matter how painful the blow is being rained upon Egypt, he's not going to give in. There's a lot to be said for understanding the point of view of one's enemy. Only then can one take correct defensive measures. By entering the mindset of those who oppose and hate us, we gain an understanding as to how to counteract diseased thoughts, cursed minds. Don't sit and ascribe rationale and logic to those who are looking to destroy us. We have to enter their mindset and understand that the greatness of God is illustrated through hard hearts and stubborn wills of the Egyptian Paro. So even though Moshe shows disappointment that he's unable to convict, uh, convince Paro, um, we realize it's not the end of the story. I must share this before we go to fill in phylacteries. I came across this, the tefillin, those straps that wrap around the hand and arm, they contain a single piece of parchment with all four passages of the Torah written on it, while the tefillin of the head has four separate pieces of parchment, each in its own compartment. A lot of sources tell us that when it comes to ideas symbolized by the tefillin, there can be many, many parts with each person um, thinking as he sees fit. When it comes to action, as symbolized by the tefillin of the hand, division is a sin. Our actions must be united. Shabbat Shalom, something to think about. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips with scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. Howdy, this is Rita from League City, Texas, now living in Israel. And though my heart may have belonged to Texas, it now belongs to Israel and all the fantastic show hosts at Israel News Talk Radio. Hi, this is Michael Solomon from Kiryat Arba, Israel. And why do I love listening to Israel News Talk Radio? Because I love listening to the interesting interviews they do and their news reporting that most other media sources don't cover. Hey, this is Nicole Eko from Malmo, Sweden. It gets pretty cold here in Sweden, so I love cuddling up with a warm cup of tea while I listen to Israel News Talk Radio. Hey, everybody, this is Frank Norris from Tennessee. Me and my dog Buster really love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. 